All right, we are here with Ronda Rousey, who on July 5th will be defending her women's bantamweight title <clears throat> against Alexis Davis at UFC 175. First of all, thank you, Rhonda. We appreciate it. Thank you. As always. Um, you just finished up training camp for this fight. Uh, how did it go? How are you feeling? Um, I'm, sp I'm feeling suspiciously fantastic, actually, because the, the last two camps have been so crazy with, you know, before UFC 168, I came straight from filming movies for pretty much 10 weeks straight. And um, the McMahon camp was right after the Misha camp, so my body was just so worn down after that long haul. And... Um, I pretty much had some time to chill out after doing Entourage, which was all done at home, and I trained all the way through, and I was actually concerned. I was talking to my coach. I was like, I don't think we're doing enough for this camp. And he was like, no, I've written everything down. You're doing more than you ever have before. It's just that you're not completely exhausted and torn apart like you were before. And so, yeah, this is the fastest I've ever been, the best sparring I've ever been, the most work I've been able to do. I mean, I've had to take, like, I don't think I had, like, one day off in the whole camp just given to me and usually like my coach makes me rest a lot more and i feel great i feel like if shredder and his henchmen jumped in right now i could kick his butt in chanel's but you know it's just uh, yeah it, it's gone suspiciously well and um there there, there have been you know a, a couple little little things you know that just come with being camp and being a fighter but i mean this has been my my smoothest camp since sarah coffin which was one of my best performances now uh let's talk a little about alexis davis there's the whole brazilian jiu-jitsu versus judo but at the same time uh she's she's got to be a dangerous opponent for you uh someone you have to respect what are your thoughts about her uh, well, she's one of the most experienced girls I've ever fought, and she's definitely the most well-rounded girl that I've ever fought. I mean, the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt is the thing that everyone keeps bringing up as, you know, will she be able to defend my arm bars, which I feel like the, the judo style of, of uh, Neiwaza, which is our term for the groundwork, is uh, it's much different than jiu-jitsu. So it's like, you know, how, how judo throws work so well against wrestlers. And they, they do throws all the time, but they're just not used to judo style throws. It's the same thing with jiu-jitsu. They do submissions all the time. They're just not used to my style of submissions. And it's very easy for me to find jiu-jitsu black belts to train with and train with their style. But it's going to be very, very difficult for her to find someone not just with a judo style of groundwork, but a judo style that's, that's good on the ground because you have the option to not be good on the ground in judo. I mean, you could just be good enough to defend and get away with it. That's not a, why a lot of judo good are, are known for not being strong on the ground. But to be in judo and be good on the ground, that means you have to be good enough to make it work in a couple of seconds. And that's a style that it would be very hard for her to recreate in training. And then there's your striking. And we're hearing uh, from some people that the striking continues to improve and uh, some people continue to go down during camp. Um, you know, I, I, I never... I never want to be that person that brags about how you do in practice because I, I think that's really kind of tacky. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they, we're all training, we're all there together, and we're all trying to get better. And no one, no one won practice today. I'm never going to say that. <clears throat> but um, I mean, I haven't put on a judo gi and done judo in years, and I've been doing striking six days a week since I started MMA. I mean, it's uh, that one major hole that I had to fill and first I was working on it solely so that I would be able to feel comfortable striking enough to be able to apply my grappling and to be able to force my grappling upon somebody. And, and now I really feel like I've gotten to the point where I can also be offensive in my striking as well. And that actually forces more opportunities to happen in my grappling because I have the option of going back and forth as we saw against Sarah McMahon. Now you've got your UFC career, you've got movies, things are going in every direction, and then there's family. <laughs> you're training with uh, your younger, you've been training with your younger sister Julia. You have another sister getting married uh, any day now. Yeah. How's, what's that been like? Uh, well, my little sister Julia, she's usually uh, in boarding school during the year. Like she comes home on the weekends because it's in, it, you know, it's in Ohio, so mm -hmm. it's like it's far away, but not too far away. So I don't really get to see her that much during the year. And the the summer, uh, she wanted to get in shape for the summer, and I, I don't really get to spend that much time with her now because she's in boarding school and I'm so busy. So I've been, you know, picking her up every morning and taking her with me to the gym. She's been my little road dog. For the, the whole camp and uh, it, I was actually super impressed because she come from soccer you know and Jose Aldo started in soccer and uh, she picked it up like right away I was impressed how she looked even 
and after one weekend we would do ch team trainings at the beach and everything and she would come and sav it out like she she we can tell she's like uh, more of a soccer person though because in that team environment she mm. really really uh, it brings out the best in her mm. you know where I'm the, the type of person where I want a lot of indiv individual attention mm. and someone focused on me for me to do the best like when we train as a group like it, I, I'm just amazed at how, how much work she does and then you, there's a wedding. Yes, and so uh, my sister Jennifer is getting married tomorrow. And um, I usually go into Vegas like Tuesday before, so now I have to go earlier after I do media all day today. And I haven't even packed yet. Then I gotta pack, then I gotta jump on the road. Then I have to go to Vegas. Then I have the wedding tomorrow, which happens to all be in Mandalay, which is good, so I'm not leaving the hotel. And um, not the hotel, but Mandalay. See, uh, like that's nice like, that. I, I heard they're changing the name of the hotel because yes. people were tired of that. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, just finding a way to juggle it and make it all work. Um, somehow we find a way. So you know, fam family is first, but family is also understanding. And so I will, I'll be there for the actual ceremony, but they will excuse me if I have to peace out early and you know, not eat any cake. <laughs> With all that going on, how ready are you for this fight, July 5th? Uh, I'm the most ready I've ever been in my whole career. I really feel like like I'm peaking now, and people haven't seen the best that I have yet. That's kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for the time. Oh. July 5th, UFC 175, Ronda Rousey versus Alexis Davis at Mandalay Bay. Yes. Thank, thank you. you.